guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part one of lesson 7.3. We are looking at multivariable linear systems. So these are systems of equations that have two or more variables in them. Two objectives for this video. We're gonna use back substitution to solve linear systems that are in row echelon form. And we are gonna use Gaussian elimination to solve systems of linear equations. When we're solving this kind of linear system, our goal is to get the system into what's called row echelon form. And that's where our equations have kind of a stair step pattern where those variables gradually go away. So the top equation has all of our variables. Next one down loses that first variable. And then from there on, we keep losing a variable as we go down. We also wanna have a leading coefficients of one in front of all of those variables. So top equation, our x has a one on it. Middle equation, our y has a one on it. Last equation, our z has a one on it. And then what this allows us to do is go through and use something called back substitution to figure out our missing values. Our last equation tells us what our z value is. So what we could do with that is we could take that z value and plug it back into the next equation up. So we'd get the equation y plus three times two equals five, and then we could solve that. Three times two is six, and if we subtracted that six over to the other side, we'd get y equals negative one. And then we've got two variable values that we could plug into our top equation. So our z value is two, and we just said our y value was negative one. So then we can go through and solve that one. So then our top equation would say x minus two times negative one plus three times two equals nine. And then if we solve that one, well, three times two is six, and negative two times negative one is a positive two. So we get x plus two plus six equals nine. Well, six plus two is eight. If we subtract the eight over to the right-hand side, we get x equals one. And then we can write our final answer out. Normally, we've only got two variables, so we'd write that out as an ordered pair. But now we've got three variables, an x, a y, and a z. So we're gonna write out what's called an ordered triple. We're still gonna go in alphabetical order so that x value will come first, our y value second, and then our z value will be last. So our ordered triple would be one, negative one, two as our answer for the system of equations. Now to start with, our systems aren't going to be in that row echelon form. So we're gonna use something called Gaussian elimination to help us get our system in that form. And there's a few options that we have as far as things we can do that'll give us an equivalent system of equations. First option we have is to just exchange two equations, rearrange how they're ordered so that we can work on getting that stair-step look. Option number two, we can multiply one of our equations by some non-zero constant. And option number three, we can add a multiple of one of our equations to another equation to replace that equation in this system. So here's our first example we're gonna look at. We've got this system, three x minus two y equals negative one, and x minus y equals zero. Now we want that stair-step look where we have leading coefficients of one. And right now, on our top equation, that one does not have a leading coefficient of one. But if we look at our second equation, that one does. And one of the options we had is that we could rearrange the order on these. So I'm actually gonna take this bottom equation right here, x minus y equals zero, and put that on top of a new system. So I'm just building a new system over here on the left. Now, as we work with this other equation, in order to get that stair step look, we're gonna have to get rid of this three X at the beginning of our equation. So we're gonna use some elimination stuff that we talked about in previous sections to help us out. So we've got this top equation. In order to get rid of this three X at the beginning, we'll need a negative three X so I'm gonna take this original bottom equation and multiply it by negative three. So if we take negative three times x, we get negative three x. Negative three times negative y gives us plus three y, and negative three times zero gives us zero. And now we're gonna add these two equations together. When we do that, those x's cancel out. Negative two y plus three y gives us one y, and negative one plus zero gives us negative one. So we get a new equation, y equals negative one. And that fits in our stair step look. So I'm gonna fill this in, in this new system that we were building. Well, we know what our y value is now. It says y equals negative one. So we can use that back substitution process to figure out what our x value should be. So we go x minus, plug in our negative one equals zero. This double negative turns into a positive. So x plus one equals zero. If we subtract the one over, we get x equals negative one. And then writing our answer as an ordered pair, our x value is negative one and our y value was also 
negative 1. This next example has three equations and three variables, but we're still going to work on getting it in that row echelon form. So remember, we want that stair step look with a leading coefficient of 1. And I think if we look at this top equation, it looks okay to me. We've already got a leading coefficient of 1 on that x variable. So as we start building our new system in that row echelon form, we're okay to use that top equation. We don't have to replace that at all. So we got x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. Now remember, we want to gradually get rid of variables. So our next equation should lead off with a y. If we look at our second equation, we've got that negative x plus 3y equals negative 4. I did leave that space in there because there's no z variable in there, so I left it in there as kind of a placeholder as we're working. We want to get rid of that negative x so that it does have this stair-step look. And I think if we add this top equation to it as is, since it has a regular x out in front, those things will end up canceling out. So if we use that top equation, x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, and we add those things together, those x's will cancel out. 3y minus 2y is 1y, and then we've got this plus 3z equals 5. This is going to work out for our row echelon form. It doesn't have any x's, and it has that leading coefficient of 1 on our y. So I'm going to fill that in on our new system that we're building over here on the left. So y plus 3z equals 5. Now we need to work with that last equation. We need to get rid of both the x's and the y's in this equation. So we've got 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. First thing I'm looking at doing is getting rid of those two x's in the front. I'm going to take our very, very top equation, which was that x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, and I'm going to multiply that by negative 2. When we do that, we get negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 18. And then if we add these two equations together, those x's cancel out. Negative 5y plus 4y is negative 1y. Then we get minus z equals negative 1. Now we need to get rid of this y right here. And the only equation that's going to work for us without reintroducing an x variable is this brand new second equation. We can use that to help us build towards this row echelon form. So I'm going to use that one as is. y plus 3z equals 5. And then if we add these equations together, while well, those y's cancel out, negative z plus 3z gives us 2z equals 4. Now this is almost how we need it to be, but we need to have a 1 in front of that z. So we can divide both sides by this 2 to get the equation z equals 2. And then I'm going to take that and rewrite it in our new system that we've been building, z equals 2. And then this is where we would use that back substitution to go through and solve it. But you might be looking at this system saying, hey, that looks really familiar. This is the system that we started off the video with in doing that back substitution. And when we went through and solved that one, we got the order triple 1, negative 1, 2. Now just like when we're solving other systems of equations, there are a few different things that can happen. We could get one answer like we've been getting so far. This is going to be an example of an inconsistent system, which means there's not actually going to be an answer to this one, but we're going to run through the process to check it out. So top equation looks like it's okay for our row echelon form. It's got that leading coefficient of 1 on our x variable. So we're going to start building our new system with that one. If we do a little bit of work with that second equation, 2x minus y minus 2z equals 2, we need to get rid of those two x's. So I am going to take this top equation and multiply it by negative 2. So we get negative 2x plus 6y minus 2z equals negative 2. When we add these together, those x's cancel out. We get 5y minus 4z equals 0. Now we want to have a leading coefficient of 1 in front of this y. Right now we've got a 5, so what I'm going to do is take everything and divide it by 5. When we do that, we get y minus 4 fifths z equals 0. And we're going to fill that into our new system that we're building. y minus 4 fifths z equals 0. And then we'll start working on our last equation. So that one says x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 1. I'm going to take our original top equation and multiply it by negative 1 because we need to cancel out those x's. So we'll get negative x plus 3y minus z equals negative 1. 
Then if we add those together, our x's will cancel out. We'll get 5y minus 4z equals negative 2. Now we need to get rid of those 5y's. And I'm actually going to backtrack just a little bit. Um, up here, we had this 5y minus 4z equals 0 equation, but then we divided everything by 5 to get this y minus 4 fifths z equals 0. I'm actually going to use this equation that I have boxed in blue, but I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. So then we get negative 5y plus 4z equals 0. And then if we add these equations, those y's cancel out and those z's cancel out. So we get 0 equals and on the right hand side we get negative 2 and 0 can't equal negative 2 so this one is going to have no solution like we said earlier on and there's a few different ways that we can represent that we can say no solution we could say the solution does not exist or we could use this empty set notation which is like a 0 with a vertical line through it which just says that there is no answer to this system of equations the other thing we could run into is we could have a system that has an infinite amount of solutions. So working towards row echelon form, if we look, those top two equations are actually set up how we need it to be. So I'm just going to copy those into a new system. So we got the top one, x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1. And then we got y minus z equals 0. We are going to have to do some work with that last equation. So negative x plus 2y equals 1. First thing I want to do is get rid of that negative x. So I'm going to take our top equation, x plus y minus 3z equals negative 1, and we'll add those things together. So those x's cancel out. We get 3y minus 3z equals 0. Taking our middle equation times negative 3, we get negative 3z plus 3z equals 0. And if we add these up, y's cancel, z's cancel, so we get 0 equals 0 which is what's telling us that we're going to have an infinite amount of solutions. But our solutions have to have a certain look to them. So when we're dealing with this infinite amount of solutions case, what we're going to do is we're going to let z equal any number. We're going to use this z equals a thing. And then we're going to do back substitution to figure out what our other values should look like. So we'll take this a value and plug it in right here to our next equation up. So we get y minus a equals 0. So that would say that y equals a. And then we're going to take both of those, the z value of a and the y value of a, and plug those into our very, very top equation. So x plus, here we're going to replace that y with an a, minus 3 times we'll replace z with an a equals negative 1. Then if we take a minus 3a, we get x minus 2a equals negative 1. And we want x to be all by itself, so I'm going to add that 2a over to the other side. So x equals 2a minus 1. And then we will write out our ordered triple. So our x value is 2a minus 1. Our y value was just a plain a, and our z value was a plain a. So this is the solution to this system of equations. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.